pay to win is Gale Force and Aether Raids. During the last three months, I built over a hundred teams from free to play all the way up to the most expensive thing I could possibly think of, which was 11,000 orbs. We're gonna look at the value at different investment levels and how they did, but I really wanna know in the comments, how often do you all use Gale Force in Aether Raids? Let me know. Now let's get into our free to play squad. This was the second hardest team I made. And let me tell you, Redditosker is a good unit, but it is tough to use her as a pure Gale Force carry. I used the Asker Trio in every one of these teams just to kind of level the playing field as a bonus unit, but let's get into the clear and see how this team does. Now, I, the Bolt Tower is so important to these kind of teams because they just simply don't do enough damage. But there's a lesson from that that you can take. If your unit doesn't do enough damage, Bolt Tower. There are problems with that, but most of them involve positioning of the Bolt Tower and the fact that after that turn one, there are different effects that go off. For instance, Hardy Fighter that can make things harder for you to finish the clear. Still, this feels very unforgiving and punitive, a lot like the 2019 Gale Force meta did. I tried it back then and it was painfully hard and not very rewarding. And it took hours to get those clears done. I would not encourage you to try this team. Please do something easier like this next team we're gonna talk about with the flavor of the minute. It has never been easier to get into Gale Force and a lot of that is due to Winter Edelgard. She is a phenomenal unit with three actions and piercing and all of this other stuff. Like this unit has everything you could possibly want and she was on a sparkable banner. The only other orbs I've spent on this were on Asker, but let's look at the clear and see how this team does. Now, it's notable that all I really do here is smite Edelgard, and then we are good to get going. Magic traps right now are way too weak, only requiring 65 HP to get over that threshold. I do expect that to change, but I don't expect Edelgard to stop being good. The other block can be the other traps, but double smite has been used since the beginning of Gale Force and can still be used now to get units onto those tiles. Even if they're lightning traps, you can then use them as Wings of Mercy beacons. A lot of things kind of fall into place that way. There are a couple upgrades to this team that you can look into that will make it a lot more powerful. Guidance 4 is one of them. Warping in general is just really nice to get units into position, but you add on Yuri with Disarm Trap and you can do some really wicked things getting units into action. If you imagine some sort of wall there where you couldn't smite, you could then foul play uh, Edelgard into position after warping one space over. And then Edelgard still has her action available. A team like that is probably gonna cost about a thousand more orbs, but even then we're talking about 1200 orbs, which is not terrible. But if you're just getting started, 259 is really nice. It brings us to the point though, how am I counting these orbs? What I've done is taken the merges for the unit I've wanted, then taken the average orbs to get to the merges I want, so the 50th percentile number. I have then counted in a spark for units that have an applicable banner. Then I've added in fodder, and I've taken each piece that I wanted, and I have taken a value that is the average to summon one unit per banner across all the colors. What this doesn't include is any fodder you have in the codes, accidental fodder or accidental units that you've gotten, four star special units, all of that can make this cheaper as well as doing fodder chains, which we'll talk about later. For this in particular team that we're about to see, this is about a 2300 orb team. Keep in mind, you have a 300 orb allowance. So this is probably a little over seven months income. Getting into the team though, I want you to realize that most of the stuff is things you probably already have in your barracks. That's important. At this level, this is probably a team that you could put together short of Valoria. Some people don't have her, although she is on arena tickets. Most people don't have her with that build. And in particular, the infantry pulse is really nice on her. The thing about flyers, we talked about terrain being something that inhibits the movement of Gale Force units and something that is the big way that you defend against them. Flyers ignore a good portion of that and that's what's so powerful. Now, you're seeing Golveg take on a plus 10 Corrin, which is huge and the way she can do that is through AOEs. 
Cooldown reduction is the name of the game when you're talking about team setup for all Gale Force modes. You want your Gale Force to be as low as possible. In fact, the, the term is one tap. Like you wanna be able to attack once and be able to trigger Gale Force. That is really huge. But having an AOE initiator means it covers over a multitude of sins as far as what crazy new things they have or how many merges. AOE is one of the equalizers when it comes to Gale Force, but we have so many ways to do damage now. Pre-combat, in combat, before combat, after combat, which you saw with Savage Blow on the last clear. There are so many ways that you can be creative with this. Keep that in mind. But if you're liking this so I'm far, hit you. the like button and we're gonna get into some more exotic things. All right, here's where I stop telling you that you have these pieces in your barracks already. We're gonna start getting into a little crazier things here and starting to get into exotic fodder and in this case, an exotic Thor. <laughs> so. The thing we wanna look at is how older units pair with newer fodder and how we can make teams better in that way. Let's get into the clear though. What we've got here is Summer Edelgard against two units that she has no business defeating in Freyr and the Byleths. We cannot get through those with her. So what we're gonna do is use her three actions, go in and after that's done, we're gonna swoop in with Thor and Thor is going to take care of Freyr. And here's where investing into mythics like this comes in very handy. Even if you don't have the merges, this build can really show up for you. But the next piece though, we have to be able to take out the Byleths. And that's where Cordelia comes in and she is a criminally underrated Gale Force unit. That's really what she was designed for. What we're gonna do here is freeze things out with Sather, who is phenomenal in her own right. And then we are going to collect pots and come in and absolutely smack the crap out of Byleth with Cordelia. So this is where we really start to see. Older units require better support and or better fodder. So we're gonna take a pause right here and talk about investments. And in particular, because Summer Edelgard just went in, I wanna point out that that unit is two years old. And the fact that you can still use her is kind of phenomenal. Carries don't generally last that long in this game and Gale Force is the exception. The thing is, in general, Gale Force carries and investments depreciate slower than any other thing in the game. But we're gonna get into some crazier investments here in just a second. I want you to know two things. Just because there's a big number on the screen in merges or fodder, doesn't mean that you can't build the team cheaper. It may not do as much, but it may do 95% as much, which is just fine, I promise. The other is, these are concepts that hopefully give you ideas. I'd like to get the juices spinning, and if you watch folks like MB on Twitter, or Dark Rusher, or DTM with his free-to-play godly Gale Force clears, even PM1 posts these eventually, those all have great ideas on how you can build teams and execute them. I'll leave links down in the description, but let's get to the next one. Bernie is such an interesting unit, and in this case, she's gonna take a legendary Dimitri who has every single piece you'd want, except he also has healing. And she's gonna make up for that. And the way we're gonna do that is with a level one dancer. Let's watch the clear just to see how this works. Because I, this is a very popular thing to do with a lot of Gale Forcers. And what we're gonna do is reciprocal aid on the 18 health dancer. And it's going to get Dimitri into a range where you can then Wings of Mercy in and have buffer there. It's also possible that you get him under 25% and then you never have to do the buffer. The payout is this, and Legendary Dimitri is going to smash Gustav. This is a unit that would give Winter Edelgard trouble. He's then gonna absolutely demolish this plus 10 Brave Hector. Summoners, this is incredible when you think about the age of the unit, even with the refine that was good, but not great. This is a way that you can actually use a lot of your older units. A lot of the times it is easier to take your favorites and use them in Gale Force or some kind of player phase strategy as opposed to using them as an Omni Tank, which it just takes so much to get those to work. 
So keep that in mind, but are you ready for the real insanity now? 8,500 orbs is a huge amount. That's almost three years to collect that. That is insane. And you get this kind of mess when you put that together, because look at that leaf. That is sick. There are a lot of fun things about this team. I do want to point out one of the other things you can do now with Gale Force builds is with the new rules, you can build that Triandra with Arcane Devourer and still keep all of her stuff. That is an incredible Gale Force build. But I also want you to keep an eye on that Garrick, who is the sleeper unit of the year, as well as Krom, who is a good Gale Forcer in his own right, but you add in the cooldown from Marth and things really accelerate quickly. So let's look at this chaos clear. The first thing you'll notice is that Leaf is the carry, but Krom is the Wings of Mercy beacon. And that's kind of a fun thing you can do with this if you're just trying to maximize a unit in order to be able to kill something like, well, we're about to go up against the Byleths with Leaf. I still can't believe that happened. If you look at the Sims, that is not a fluke. This unit is much stronger than you think when you add in all of the new fodder and things around them. You can see how this does in Chaos Season, which is really the wild, wild west. But the other thing is, it's kind of a renaissance for any sort of nuke or gale force carry. They give you so many tools and supports now that you can do crazy things like this leaf. Let's talk about how you could make this leaf cheaper though. This is nutty, I know. This took me three hours just to do the fodder portion, but this is what I needed to set up to at least get the right fodder to the right units for this episode. Now, you'll notice that a lot of representative builds are used throughout this. Like, I don't have the orbs to put together all of these teams with merges. That is nuts. But what I can do is create a single crown with all the right pieces, and then for that leaf, for instance, I just had to give up one crom. I'm okay with that for an episode. This also allowed me to finally update my Asker trio. But we're gonna get into the most expensive team you have ever seen right now. 11,436 orbs. That is so many. That would take you four years of straight saving. Just, and then from scratch, you could go out and get this team. That hurts my head, but every piece of this team is fine-tuned and handcrafted. Look at this Edelgard with the plus 10 Marth support for the extra stats. That's wild. Or this Anna build that I would highly suggest anyone getting into Gale Force should look at. I could wax on, but we really need to look at the clear. The thing is, immediately what you see on this map is Brave Edelgard. And Brave Edelgard is meant to stop any and all melee gale forces. That's her reason for existence, and she does a very good job at it. But this Edelgard laughs at her, <laughs> like with room to spare. That is crazy and so much fun. The thing that happens next is Wings of Mercy 4 shenanigans allows you to go to a lot more places than you normally would be able to. And things like Attack Speed Wild on Asker let you charge up specials and get Gale Force quicker so that you have so many extra actions that instead of just finishing the team off, you can take your time and settle back. That's what you're gonna find is a lot of the difference in this team versus, for instance, that Red Atosker team at the beginning. It's just so much more forgiving and there are so many more directions you can go with it. Even with just this representative team, I would highly recommend getting a chance to play with one of these because Wings of Mercy 4 is one of the most powerful skills in the game and it's crazy that we're not talking about it simply because it's so hard to get onto units. This is why fodder factories are so important and why I push for them in A Hero Rises. But let's take a bigger look at what exactly is going on. At this point, you've probably seen the most expensive thing ever, and you thought, okay, Gale Force, definitely pay to win. I, I want you to remember that that team, yes, absolutely pay to win. But if you compare that team to just Winter Edelgard and that very simple second team that we used, that team does 90% of what we just saw. Does it have less flash and glamour? Certainly, but there are so many things you can do with that team and the Gulveg team, which I mentioned 
most of you have enough stuff to build that in your barracks. The thing that I have really enjoyed about Gale Force and looking at it is how you can slowly build your team. It's not a thing like Omni Tanks where in order to get them to work, you need all the pieces right now. You can start with Wings of Mercy 3 and slowly get Wings of Mercy 4 on individual units before you go on to some kind of special acceleration thing that makes it easier or some kind of damaging dancer like Triandra who gives you five extra on each of your hits. These pieces are fun, but they're upgrades along the way. They're not the final goal. The final goal, honestly, is that Winter Edelgard team. The final goal is to be able to go in and take out some of these teams that are so hard to get with your Omni Tanks and have some sort of balance to where if they go over too far into one side defending Omni Tanks versus Gale Force, you're able to capitalize on that easily. So I would argue in terms of Aether Raids, this is probably the free to play -ist way you could possibly go. I'm not saying give up your tanks. I'm not giving up mine, but just get options. It's fun and it lets you play with a more variety of things and it's never been easier. If you're interested in how to get some of the orbs to upgrade your team, you can go look at my event tips video. It talks about how to maximize those for either maximum orbs or minimal time and still get the most orbs out of them. I would also love to know how you liked this because this is a new thing for me. If I get a good enough response, I could do more of these or this could be a one-off and could be just a really fun ride for me. Either way, members, thank you so much for helping me get fodder factories and take care and schedule an appointment with your fail just real soon.